Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Today I'm gonna lead you through the very easy process of making one of those super sweet wood door rounds that everybody has on their door. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the project. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going on our wooden door round. So let me tell you the materials that I'll be using for the project before we hop into design space and I show you very quickly the design that I have already cut out on the adhesive vinyl. So the first thing is you will need a large wood round. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're about 14 inches round and they come in a pack of three. So I've got one of these and I've already prepared it for the project and I'll talk about that momentarily. Um, I have a few sprigs of some flower stems. I'm not sure if I'm going to need them, but I did pull them out just in case we need to add a little something something to the wood round. I have some ribbon to make a pretty bow and I have some really strong um, twine to hang it. And so the other things that are important are, I've got some adhesive vinyl, I've got the designs already cut out, and then of course regular tools. So scissors, tweezers, weeding tool. Um, I always keep my true control knife out on my table when I'm crafting. And then I'm gonna be using a staple gun for adhering the, um, the twine to the back, but you could just as well use wood glue. I mean, not wood, well, yeah, I wouldn't use wood glue but you could use hot glue and that would work just as well. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to do is tell you how I prepared the wood. So they come like this. So just a very blank bleached wood. Okay. So I didn't have any stain and I got a little creative and had my daughter pull some paint out of her art supplies and she didn't have any brown, but she did have red and green. So we mixed up a brown using red and green, and I watered it down quite, um, quite watery. And I just brushed it all over. I wanted to be able to see the wood grain through the brown paint. I did not want it to have a solid appearance, so that was the purpose for watering it down. So I let that dry and it, I mean, it looks like I stained the wood round, but I did not. This is literally acrylic paint. <laughs> then uh, the next thing I did when that was dry is I taped off. I just decided along the bottom kind of how high I wanted to go. And I put a piece of painter's tape and then I measured up five inches and I put another piece of painter's tape. Now a little tip, when you are doing your painter's tape, um, I used the lines of my mat here to you know, get things even. And then when I wanted to come up here, I put a piece of painter's tape right here. And then I put the, um, you know, I wanted it horizontal to be parallel basically. So I made sure that I used this kind of like a level almost and then put my ruler where I needed it to be and then the second strip of painter's tape. This is two coats of Waverly white chalk paint and I let that dry. And so now I'm ready to put the design on the wood round. So before I get to weeding, I want to take you to design space and show you a couple of things Okay, in Design Space, I brought up a blank canvas and then I started to play around with different designs. And these were the other, um, these are the other designs. I have four total and only one of them I chose. So we're only gonna be making one, but I wanted to basically show you what I did to get the sizing correct because I think that's really important so I pulled a round circle. I'll just go to shapes. I'm gonna pull a circle. Okay, and then that circle needs to be resized. So 
So I will resize that. Okay, and then I changed the color just for design purposes, not necessarily for cutting out any vinyl in brown. The next thing I did is I went to shapes and I grabbed a square and I brought the square over and I decided from the bottom of the square, kind of made it a little bigger like this, I just pulled the side and I just decided like where I thought it would end up in relation to my wood round, the way I already had it painted. And then I came up to the height and I changed it to five. And then I did have to move it back over. So um, you just kind of play around with the sizing. So here we go. I've got, you know, about a quarter of the wood round exposed and then some at the top. And then what I did is I selected both layers and I went to slice. Okay, so after I did slice, I just pulled away the big rectangle part and I then had this, it doesn't matter whether you choose the brown or the gray one, but basically you have the size of the painted area. So I just turned that to white. So now it looks like the wood sign that I painted. And then I attached, well, I didn't attach, I grouped it. I don't need to cut it out, so I don't need to attach anything. And I wanted to wanted it to stay not only in that orientation, but I wanted it to stay those colors. And then what I did is I went over to images and I found four different versions of Hello Summer. This particular design right here is literally the design out of Design Space. It has the words and the yellow sun and then these yellow little uh, decorative elements over here. And so I just kind of sized it down and put it on an offset um, to the right. And then I found one that just said, Hello Summer, and I really liked the font for this one. Um, and I just put that over to the right. So we have that one there and that one there. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, so then um, I had been organizing all my craft supplies. So I realized that I had a lot of printable vinyl. And so I, I had the bright idea of bringing in a peony and doing a print and cut and layering that on top of the paint and then putting the Hello Summer smaller in whatever font that particular one is. It's an image, so it's not a, it's not a true font. And then this right here, actually, I'm noticing that that should, well, that should not say print and cut, it should say basic. I'm gonna change that super fast because if I use this again, I will want the vinyl to be basic cut and not print and cut. Okay, so I have a peony. This would have been done with the print and cut feature uh, on printable vinyl. And then this would be, have been black vinyl. And I really like that. I mean, I just really, really like it. But I, I just, I don't know. Um, there's something there's something about it I'm just not sure and I think what it is is I have this really pretty shimmery vinyl that I would really like to use I think that is ultimately what it is so I found another hello summer and it's very scripty like the one up here and then the summer is block and then I found I went to Im uh, images or projects and I found this I just did uh, summer coasters and then this is like a watercolor flower sketch. Not exactly sure what that is called. Let's take a look. It just says Daisy. Okay, so it is like a Daisy sketch. And I really like that. So this is a, a design I had been wanting to use for a while. So I decided for to make everything easy just to go easy breezy print and cut and a wood round all at one time 
you know, I'm not sure I have all of the time to do that today. So I just hid all of these and that's the one that I decided to go with for today. So I've already cut the daisy and the hello summer. All we have to do is put this on the wood round, add the bow, the little flower sprigs and the hanger. So let's head over to the overhead camera and go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to move the round out of the way. Let's move off some of these tools out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and weed. Then this should be a pretty easy weed. And I have to laugh because when I got done cutting my vinyl, I realized that they got cut using my deep point blade instead of my fine point blade. Um, it surprisingly did not go through the vinyl and I was very glad that that didn't happen, but I just thought it was funny. I had used the deep point blade to play around with some faux leather because I wanna make like some little coin purses and some sunglass um, cases and so, I had forgotten to change my blade, but that's okay because it still works. It did a great job. Has that ever happened to any of you where you just forget to change out your blade and then you realize after the fact? So I just thought it was hilarious. And I'm just using some black vinyl. I think this is from Michael's and it is very very sticky and I'm just gonna weed these middles out so this is the third week of summer and not a lot has happened we've had to go to the doctor for some broken fingers we have, well, we've done some work, like it's just been kind of a slow start to summer, but I guess that's okay. Have any of you already had some major summer activities? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys are doing for fun this summer. So here's our words, nice, ready to go. Here's our daisy. And we'll just pull off the perimeter of the daisy and then we've got to weed out some spaces. I love this shimmery vinyl. Let me show you this. It is so shimmery. I just love it. Um, this is actually from Hobby Lobby and um, I'm not sure I'm 100% sold on all of their vinyl, the whatever it is, 405 or whatever that may be, but um, I really was just bowled over by this color. So the only issue is that it's really hard to see the cut lines. I think that I'm going to get this weeded and then we will start putting everything together on the wood round. Okay, so that was a little bit longer weed than I expected, but I think it's because the shimmer really, um, and the my lighting, so it's kind of hard to see some of the cut lines, but isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. Okay, so let me grab my paper transfer tape and we will get this put onto our wood round. This is my paper transfer tape and I love this stuff. I use it for my wood crafts and my paper projects. 
and it's just a really, really low tack friendly transfer tape. It doesn't have any grid lines, but that is okay. So I think the first thing we need to do is move our tools out of the way. And I'm gonna put this on here. And grab my my scraper tool. I'm gonna burnish this down really good on the front and on the back. Okay, so here's a question. Um, do you like to see, do you prefer that the crafts are already cut out and ready to go, maybe even weeded and ready to go? Or do you like to see the design process or at least a partial uh, amount of the design process in design space? What do you think you like best? Sometimes I wonder, I think it's important to learn things in design space and you know refreshers are always good even for those of us that have been doing cricket for a while but i know other people are very interested in the crafts but they just want to see the crafting part so i would be interested in knowing your preferences such as show me everything all of the design space pieces, the weeding, the putting it together, everything versus um, just peek into design space, show me a little bit of weeding, then put it together. And then finally, I don't want to see design space or weeding. I just want to see you put the cups together. So I would love to know what you guys um, think. And mind you, cannot please everybody all of the time, but I would like to give everybody a little bit of what they prefer. And that goes for the type of crafts too. So maybe you are someone who wants to see like some cards, you know, card of the week or a particular craft, etc. I would love for you guys to give me some feedback on that. It would be great. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm not gonna put this down without the transfer tape yet, but I wanna see where my flower needs to go. Okay, so I think that right there is good. So, hopefully we can get this to come up all at one time. I've noticed that with the paper transfer tape, sometimes you have to help your vinyl stay down a little bit. And I've noticed that that seems to be the case more with Hobby Lobby, but it could be me. It could be total user error. And maybe somebody else knows a secret and maybe I'm just not really good at that. Okay, so here is our flower. I'm gonna bring this back over I'm going to set it here again and right there. Okay, so we're going to burnish this down. And I'm really just mostly burnishing down, not all of the transfer tape, but just the the portions of the flower sketch because I really don't want to pull up 
any of my chalk paints, but I want to make sure my flower is well adhered to this wood. I have to laugh. My husband was like, what are you making? And I said, oh, I'm going to make a summer wood round for the door. I think the spring one has run its course. It's just a monogram, but it's got flowers. And I did that with HTV. <laughs> and he's like, what? Aren't you going to do a 4th of July one? Yep. Yes, I am. But not today. So that will be a forthcoming video, is the um, 4th of July wood round. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like, this is the Make Market brand of black. It's matte. And it's from Michaels. And it just, it seems to stick to the paper transfer tape a little bit better than the other one. Okay, so let me move all of this out of my way. And I'm gonna line up that. Okay. Well, my, nope. Here they are. Let's just say my scissors have walked off and these gray ones I use more for like adhesive. Like when I am doing the adhesive strips for card making. So I really hate to use them for other things. Okay, now I can see a little bit better. Okay, I think that's good. I think this is such a neat pairing of fonts. I am. Um, I like using double fonts, but I don't know that I always pick the right pairing. And I'm just using my finger to go across these lines. I could use my scraper. I don't know that I need to. And now we're just going to pull this up. And this is that advantage of that painter's tape. Oh, the light is shifting in my craft room. All right. Look at that. That Okay, that looks really good. And I think that was a great choice. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. That was a great, great choice. Okay, and I think I fixed the lighting too. Sorry about that. Um, we have a ginormous window and I always do the blinds one direction and my husband does the blinds another direction. And so I forgot to check them earlier. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to put, yeah, we're going to put the, um, the twine on the back. I'm, I want to use my staple gun and I'm really hoping that it is not too ginormous. I don't think the staples are very, um, I don't think that they are very long. So we shall see here in just a second. Okay. Wow, that is barely, 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 barely. Okay. So I think I'll just do one and then I'll, I'll do some hot glue, but at least it will, it will kind of be down on there. And I need a particular amount because we have a hanger 
and then we have our people. So, okay, I think that's good. Okay, I'm wondering if I knot that a little bit, if it'll take up some of the slack from the, um, yep, there we go. Take up some of the slack from the, from the staple. So we'll give it a try. Okay, again, just, just barely. So, perfect, I love that, that's great. All right, let's go ahead and get the bow started. Okay, so I have gone ahead and decided to cut my, my ribbon for my bow. I have a three inch, this will be that center piece that ties it all together. And then I have a, I have a 10, a 12, and a 14 inch that I'm gonna make loops out of. So that's what these are. And then I just have a long piece that we'll just have behind all of that for tails. And we can always make the tails as long as we need them. So the first thing that I wanna do is I am going to just use my glue gun And I'm just going to put a little bead of hot glue and then I'm going to press that down. And you know, you're going to get hot glue like all over our fingers. Okay, so this one, all right. And then we're gonna have our second one. This is the top one. So this is the middle. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. Little bead of hot glue. And I'm not the best at making bows, to be honest with you. Um, and I've seen these little things where you can like, it's like a little ruler and it's got these pegs and it holds it for you and you can make the bow. And I just, I don't know. I keep thinking if I keep making bows, eventually I will get really good. Okay, here's our last one. Okay, now you could certainly use um, a zip tie or twine or whatever. Um, oh, seems like I've got a little hot glue in there. But I, I like my center to match. So I'm just going to basically fold this part into thirds like this. So I need to run a bead of hot glue. There we go. And we'll get that. Okay. I love how sparkly this stuff is. Oh goodness. You gotta love the glue strings. <laughs> uh, I just realized my voice sounds really hoarse today must be my allergies so sorry in fact it's actually um cold where i'm at we we got a frost warning here on you know june 18th or 17th okay so i am going to line these i'm basically just going to stack these up okay so i have the small medium and large and i want them as even as I can make them like this. 
and they're going to get all fluffed out. And, and I have made bows without wire ribbon, but I will tell you that wire ribbon is where it is at. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch all of this and I'm going to be wrapping this around here. So need to make sure that I'm pinched in the middle. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny dollop of glue there and put this down. And then I'm going to keep it pinched. Another tiny dollop of glue. Pull it pretty tight. And then you can see where I actually have plenty of excess that I can cut off. I don't think I need that much. There we go. And I'm just keeping it pinched. I'm putting a big glob of glue here. You know, need to get it all over my fingers before the craft is done. There we go. Okay, get that nice and adhered. Okay, so this is my bow. Cute. Okay, so then it's just a matter of fluffing up each of these and then moving them into the position where you want them. You can leave them horizontal, you can make them you know, fan around, really is up to you. Um, I'll bring this one down. Kind of bring that one up, bring that one out. So something like that. And then we'll just dovetail the ends. So if you are a bow maker, and you know how to make really good bows, I would love for you to share your secrets with me. That would be super fantastic. That's what I love about crafting communities is everybody is eager to share what they know. I think I think that my bow is probably as good as I'm gonna get, considering I am I am not a highly trained professional on this one. Okay, so there's the bow. And that's probably the best bow that I've made in my entire life. I'm oh my goodness. Alright, so now I'm gonna pinch the ends like this. Get them even, and I'm just gonna snip it, make a little dovetail down there. There we go. Yay! Okay, I'm happy. I did it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if we need these kinds of elements or not. I don't know if it's too much. So this is kind of what I was thinking, but let's bring in the wood round and see what we're at. Okay, so here's the wood round and literally, you know, and I may shorten the, the tails a little bit. I was thinking I would like to offset the bow like maybe something like that. I could put it directly in the middle, which actually isn't bad. I may just do that. I definitely are gonna shorten these. Okay, so I don't know. What do you think? I think it's too much. 
yes, I think it's too much. Either that or it's just not the right kind of greenery. So um, in that case, I think I'm going to offset this bow just slightly like that. And then I will cut the tails one more time. So let's get a ginormous amount of hot glue on here. And then we'll just squish that down. Okay. And then I do think we need to, I do think we need to trim up the tails just a little bit. But I would rather make them too long at first than not long enough. Okay, well that, that is our summer wood round. And um, I, I really encourage you to go get some brown acrylic paint out of your supplies or even just mix the red and the green like I did. And you do want to apply it very um, watery. In fact, I even would just dip my brush in water and go along um, after getting it down. But um, I think it turned out really well. It looks like it's been stained and yet that is brown acrylic paint. And then we have our chalk paint here. I, that does a great job that Waverly, and I think I got that at Walmart, or just a ginormous bottle of it. And then some adhesive vinyl and a bow and a hanger. Okay, well, I hope that you found this tutorial was insightful, informative, and inspiring to you. If you did find it helpful, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to hit that notification bell as well. That way you'll be um, in the know for when new videos are posted. In the meantime, I want you to enjoy your summer break. Um, just enjoy the sunshine and the warm breezes. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.